Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I don't know why I made that voice. For today's video, I am going to be talking about the few things that were surprising, that came kind of as a cultural shock, that were different, that I saw in Amsterdam. So I've actually done one of these before for here, Germany. I do live in the USA. Well, actually wrong. I live in Germany right now. So I did do a video on cultural shocks as an American living in Germany. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave it linked somewhere right up here. Before we get started in this video, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below right now. Also, make sure you click that little notification bell button is right next to subscribe button so you guys don't miss out from any of my upcoming new videos and if you would like to follow me on instagram at natalie Rea, that's how you can find me so number one is bicycles it blows my mind how many bicycles there are in amsterdam how insanely normal it is to ride a bike everywhere there is around 800,000 bicycles that is just insane. Each year, 15,000 bikes get pulled out out of the canal. That's a lot. It just gets you thinking on all of those accidents and how many of the bike owners ended up in the canal as well. Or how does it even happen? Like, are you just riding and you're gonna crash? So you let go and... Or maybe that's how they're trying to get rid of their bikes that they don't want. I mean, they have their own little separate bike lane and it's red, just to let you know. And it's very, 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 very dangerous. Yes, yeah, sometimes you do have to cross in front of them to get to the other place and it's kind of scary and you kind of forget about them and that's how you'll get ran over. And since they're locals, they don't really care about us. So they're, you know, they're in their lane, they're doing their own thing. So you're the one that has to watch out for yourself so you don't get ran over. Definitely seeing all of those bikes was mind blowing because when I got here to Germany, I started seeing bikes everywhere. Like when you go to all of these big cities, you see people riding bikes and whatnot. And I thought that was really exciting. I was like, wow, it's kind of cool. Like over here, people ride their bikes everywhere it's really cool no in amsterdam it's like to another level just think about it Eight hundred thousand. there was parking lots full of bikes it is insane number two is alcohol drinking so no alcohol in public it is actually illegal to be drinking alcohol in public over there and there is a fine of 95 euro which is 105 us dollars julie davis i did the math for you <laughs> that one right there would not have been as shocking if i was just visiting from the us like i i think it would be normal but hello you take me out of the us put me in germany and it's legal to be drinking in public here so you know we go to all these places here in germany and like you just see people casually chilling with a can of beer in their hands and that's totally normal and then you hello put me in amsterdam i saw the sign and it was just like yeah no you cannot which i mean if you think about all the other stuff that are illegal there you would think that alcohol drinking would be illegal in public as well number three is how many tulips there is So let me just get this out of the way. I did not visit a tulip field. I did not. Why? Because I didn't see any. And two, I don't think it's that time of the year where they're out. But I did visit the flower market. And the flower market, it's nothing but tulips. Okay, there is a few other things. But why I'm adding tulips to this is because the insane amount of colors that I saw. And in packages, like it is insane there is about three thousand different shades of colors <gasps> we'll just leave it right there and i know what you're thinking like really you're gonna be adding tulips to this but hello this is my list let me number four is gonna be money it is expensive in amsterdam and i know amsterdam is very popular it is like probably the most visited city in the Netherlands. And I know that just because I went to Amsterdam does not mean that I consider Amsterdam to be all of Netherlands. I know to experience a country, you have to go to more than one place, I get it. But again, this is just about Amsterdam. It is expensive there. Is the food as expensive as it is in Switzerland? 
No, <laughs> but hotels are very expensive in Amsterdam. They do take euros, which isn't as much of a shock, but it is very, very good to know that they take euros because it is a hundred times easier because you know how much money you're actually spending instead of going to Chuck and then you pull out money, like check money, crowns, is it crowns? And then it's just difficult because you have to be checking like the conversion and how much it is and all of the stuff. But since they take euros and we're used to paying euros in Germany, we kind of already know how much everything is. And finally in this category is that they accept debit cards mainly in every place. There's not one place that didn't accept my debit card, which I thought was really neat because that's one of the problems that I do have here in Germany. Like I always have to carry cash. If we go to a new town, 100% we need to carry cash with us. Over there, I didn't even have to take out any cash. I was only carrying a few euro and it all worked out because every place that I shopped that took my card. Number five is cultural museums. In general, museums, there is so, 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 so much to do in Amsterdam. I think it's insane. I thought it was perfect how we stayed in the center and you can walk everywhere. Or you can go online and find a huge list of things to do over there. It is ridiculous. You have a few art museums. You have the Van Gogh Museum, science museums, history museums. You have the Anne Frank House, which I must add that you must book your tickets for the tour at least two months in advance i didn't get to do it because we found out we were going to amsterdam like two weeks before we actually went and although i didn't get to visit the Anne frank house that's fine because it's just an excuse for me to go back but let me tell you guys about the heineken experience it is an experience. If you guys are going to Amsterdam, please go to the Heineken experience. I actually got this Heineken beer. You get to customize your own beer and I think that is really effing neat. Mine says Natalie right down in the bottom. So this is like a really, really good memory. It says Amsterdam. So like, just go. This can also make such a great gift for like Christmas for like your father, which I regret not getting my dad one. Number six is clothing. Usually when I'm in the States, I feel completely fine walking around in my crop top, this and that. Here in Germany, it is completely different. If I wear a crop top or a blue shirt and I'm walking regular, just doing my own little thing, I see so many people just staring at me Pretty much like if I'm different because I am standing out because here in Germany everyone blends in and it's easy to spot the people who are not from Germany. As in Amsterdam, it is definitely not plain at all. I mean, it's casual, but you see a lot of... It's actually a lot more fashionable in Amsterdam and it's not like crazy fashionable. It's just casual dressing if that makes sense you do see a lot of brands like people wearing a lot of adidas which is crazy oh my gosh i just said that as a german adidas and nike as to here in germany you don't really see that anyways not the point the point is that i cannot tell or spot tourists from locals i mean other than the people working at the locations you obviously know they're from there or majority of the people that are on the bikes because obviously they're going to work or school or whatever but they they're not dressed different from everybody else which i think that's kind of cool so that was something that was different and that was like oh okay people actually dress up over here number seven is the language <laughs> Everyone speaks English. If not everyone, a lot of people speak English. Um, I noticed this right away because here, when we go to all of these places, I'm kind of like intimidated. Like what's, what's gonna be the first word that I say? I mean, just by looking at me, obviously they know I'm not German. So are they gonna try and talk to me in English? Which for the most part, the first word is always in German and then I have to like say do you guys speak English or something like that. And in Amsterdam, it was like automatically English. English everywhere. You walk into a store and they greet you in English, even though they're Dutch, like they have their own language, yet everyone over there knows English. I thought that was really cool because obviously if you're coming from the States and you're going into Amsterdam, you don't have to deal or be scared about the language barrier because they speak pretty, pretty, pretty bomb English. So number eight is that you can get all of these yummy snacks, kind of as in a vending machine way. 
don't really see that in the states other than i've seen like cupcake vending machines but you don't see an entire little fast food restaurant with an entire wall where you could go up there insert your coins and then open it and take out your food because it's already ready i think that is really really cool and it's not like oh it's very very old no because there's people constantly filling it up think about little caesars I don't like Little Caesars, but I like how fast and ready it is. Like they always have those pizzas on deck. So as soon as you come in, you ask for it, they take it out and they give it to you. Think about a Little Caesars where you can just walk in and instead of making that line, walking up to any little section and you enter your $5 bill, you open the little window and you just take out your pizza without the people working there or giving it to you. I think that's really cool. That's like some future... So number nine is the smell of what am I doing with my hands? Number nine is the smell of pot. You obviously know what you're going to be expecting when you're going into Amsterdam, but it doesn't really, really hit you until you're there and you get that first sniff of marijuana and you're just like, Either you hate it or you're like, that's effing cool. Just the thought of knowing that you're in a place where it's legal, I think it's really, really cool. Obviously, it depends the type of person that you are. But um, in this category, I want to mention the coffee shops. Because the coffee shops over there are actually the places, like, there, there's just no coffee. It's not a coffee shop where you could go sit down and order yourself a little espresso or a latte. No, you go in there to buy the R-U-G-S. I don't want to say it why, I just don't feel comfortable talking about this stuff, but the coffee shops over there is a place where you can, can buy those stuff and you can literally find anything. And not just that, the coffee shops are everywhere. I think that's really cool, awesome for them. So I'm just going to leave it right there. Finally, this next one and last one is the red light district. <laughs> So I actually enjoyed that place. I think it's something that we all have to see, that we all should experience. Obviously, you cannot film in there. You cannot take pictures. It is frowned upon. It's disrespectful to them. So just no. And that's the reason why I'm not going to be showing you guys these little short films because I did take some for myself because, again, it is such a huge thing to experience i think it's just crazy i think it's fascinating to see these females nude or in lingerie in these windows like it's just mind-blowing you cannot get used to that it's just insane all together the red light district is just it's insane the red lights the red drapes the windows the nude females there's also so many erotic shops the most erotic shops that i have ever seen in my entire life funny story at the red light district i actually got distracted we went into a bar we drank and then when we came out i started vlogging but i was vlogging myself i was actually talking to you guys and then i am just walking and i forgot that i'm you know in the red light district how could you forget that i don't know but i hear this banging i turn around and there is a really really cute girl with a really really mad face just pointing like no and yeah and it's understandable you shouldn't be recording there especially because not a lot of people want to know that they were at the red light district so i think it's fair so yeah there you go that is the last one the red light district so there you go those are the few categories that i thought were kind of like a surprise they weren't much of a cultural shock but they were things that led me to say or think whoa 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 you know that's going on my list not that i had a list because this was actually very hard for me to remember all of these things but yeah all right well i am gonna end today's i have to be careful about not doing this because my arms literally shake so i am gonna end today's video right here i do want to give out a shout out and today's shout out goes out to jelly bean tito shout out to you and if any one of you guys will also like a shout out all you have to do is make sure to be subscribed and comment anything your big ol' heart desires i love you guys all oh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed to join the ray family and i'll see you guys soon